My name is Joe Drayton. I'm a partner at Cooley LLP, New York City office, and I have with me Dean Garfield, who is Vice President of Public Policy at Netflix. How are you doing, Dean? I'm doing really well. Thanks for having me. Awesome, awesome. We go way back and, and, and happy to be with you. But this has been a tough year, I think, right? The world can see how difficult it can be for the black and brown folks in their community and, and the disparity in our in our paths as we as we if we go out into the world and try to have professional careers. I think when when I entered the legal profession and you were right there to hold my hand in many <laughs> respects, right? There was little attention paid to differences, historical disadvantages, and preparing everyone, you know, to be successful in these different environments. I, I remember, and to put this in context, you remember when we first when we first met? I, I think I do. And the the funny thing about that time was the because the legal profession was so non-diverse, but it was like a wave of folks coming in to the industry. You and I met in the context of you calling me about the firm that we were both going to be at, but we had a lot of friends in common you know, from law school and, and otherwise, you know, and so though we had not met personally, um, we had a degree of connectivity that just built trust immediately. Exactly. And, 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 and I asked you, is it a good place to be? And you said yes. And, 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 and I said, then that's the firm I'm going to. It was, it was really that simple, uh, given the choices that, that I had coming out of law school, the trust that I had in you. Uh, made that decision easy and, and confirmed my choices, so to speak, of how to enter big law. But when we end big law, uh, <laughs> you may recall it was a very small community, uh, at least when I arrived on the scene. And I, and I harassed you and four or five other Black associates, junior associates, I think, for the most part, to, to help me succeed. And how did you navigate your way before I arrived? two things stand out. One was, or three things specifically, one was the community that was there. Though it was small, it was deeply connected uh, and supportive of each other. I would say the second thing was a sense of confidence from the schools we went to, the places we had been, that we were incredibly well prepared. So no matter what was thrown at us, we at least knew that we we had the baseline that we needed to be successful. And so I had that level of confidence um, coming in. And then the third thing was the firm wasn't the beginning and the end of my vision for legal success. You know, it was just, it was a platform for doing broader things. And the thing that was great about both of us was we, we recognized that. You know, and so in some senses, we had a vision and a value where the law firm had an appropriate place in how we thought we were going to impact the world. You know, and so I think the combination of those three things really helped in not taking it too seriously, but taking it seriously enough where we, we were prepared to deliver. You know, coming from Baltimore, not really spending a lot of time in New York being on Park Avenue and thinking, man, think about different strokes for those that know that, uh, and singing that yeah. song coming in the building. You and others show me the language of the law, the ways of the law, how to fit in, how to meet expectations. And, and that helped for a foundation of confidence. So, you know, and for me, the end of it is to be resourceful, right? Leveraging the resources that you have, that you're comfortable with, staying ready, and then returning to be bold so that so that you could make your mark, <laughs> you know, in, in, at, the, at a particular firm or an organization. You did that, I, I think, uh, oh, fantastically. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. Um, I was just reading uh, a analysis of Jeff, Jeff Bezos. And I think the, not to compare myself to Jeff Bezos, but the competencies, the skills that you just talked about, Joe, were the things that were identified, you know, so incredibly strategic, definitely bold, but also just resilient, relentless, resourceful, you know, in going after what you really believe in. And I, I think part of that actually is where our 
blackness was an asset, you know, because like you, you grew up in Baltimore. I, I grew up in Kingston, Jamaica, right? And so nothing like Park Avenue. My house was literally a tin roof. And so that background and that experience, you know, you had to be pretty gritty and resourceful and resilient to just survive, let alone strive, you know. And so I think those were hidden competencies, if you will, which served both of us well. Agreed, agreed. Now you went on from big law to, if I remember right, the record, uh, Recording yeah. Industry Association of America, yeah. the Motion Picture yeah. uh, Association of America, and then the Information Technology Industry Council. I mean, well you've done. done some big things. Uh, you've been a vice president, an executive vice president, a chief strategic officer. You've been uh, a president and a CEO uh, of an organization. But what you've done is you've navigated different professional envi environments. Can you talk about how you, you know, how you were able to navigate the different environments and gravitate into leadership? A big part of it was a openness to learning and seeking opportunity to learn rather than necessarily an opportunity to position myself. And I think that has served me well throughout my career. When I, I you probably know this because we probably talked about it. So when, when I told the folks at the firm that I was going to be leaving, back then the partnership track was like, 10 years, you know, it was like, seemed like forever. I don't know what it's like today. And I've been there for six years and I told them I was leaving and they were like, oh, well, we want you to stay. We'll make you a partner. I was like, what? Um, you know, and so I was a bit confused on whether to stay or to go, but I felt as if there was a lot of room to learn in the recording industry because it was right at the moment that it was getting crushed by the digital transition. And so I made the shift anyway. And similarly, the switch to working in the movie studios and then in the technology sector, it was all me just chasing, even where it may have meant earning a little bit less money, the, the potential to learn more, diversify my interest, see and feel more, you know? And so I think that's served me incredibly well because in each of those gigs, the aperture and experience got wider and wider, which allowed me to then apply that in how I navigated and the modicum of success I was able to achieve. You know, one of the things that I think has helped me over the years um, uh, to become a law firm partner and to have sustainability in the legal profession is I always think about how, I'm, how am I gonna add value? So, so even in my first year of law, that was really what I was looking to do and to build upon that. And, and, and uh, you know, every so often I say, well, am I really adding value to the team? Yeah. Um, what, how, how, how have you found ways to sort of add value along the way? Yeah, it's a great question. And I, I, you've done it exceptionally well. So I should be asking you, but since you asked me, I'll answer. <laughs> um, I think part of it is, is actually in what you said, which is in each place I've thought broadly about what is the mission? What is the business imperative? And how can I help to advance that? And I think by thinking broadly about how I can contribute, being clear about the broader business imperative um, and figuring out a strategy that I can help to deliver and develop that will move things forward um, has been a big part of it. I would say the other thing is just being genuinely authentic um, and, and committed to the values that I have, particularly in environments where you're not the majority, there are values that are gonna come into play that get questioned all the time. And so in addition to thinking about the broader business imperative, I've always been consistent in thinking about what do I believe in and making sure that if, at the same time I'm advancing the business imperative, uh, I'm staying true to the values that are that are core to my my enjoyment in what I'm doing. Well, we're aligned on that. I think that those are the keys to to my career success, which you just articulated. And you know, it takes a while. You're a lawyer one day, you become a business owner another day, 
and you and you have to say, well, what, I, you, I have to do both, but I'm only trained okay. in one. What happened for me was to say, who am I at, a, at my core? And I was like, you know, it's better to give than it is to receive. And I, and I look back at what you've given to me, what others have given to me over the years, and that I had to automatically do the same things you did for me, for others. Yeah. And, and my mantra has been very simple. How can I help another person? So in doing everything you just said, and on layering on top, you know, how can I help not just the enterprise necessarily achieve, that's obviously mission critical, but the individuals in the enterprise, the individuals associated with the enterprise. And I think that brings the connectivity that you talked about that was sort of innate. Uh, it, it, it makes that full circle and you get that in your professional life. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I have I see it now at Netflix, you know, it's the, I'm a part of the leadership team there and we meet every two weeks to talk about the broader strategic issue. And one of the things that I admire about that leadership team is that commitment to leadership and development, you know, so not just uh, leading, but also developing the folks around us, um, which makes it not only fun, but also quite fulfilling. So yeah, absolutely, I see it. This year, you know, I th I've given a lot, I think, to the legal community and I've been dedicated at trying to advance the ball um, for lawyers, especially lawyers that are historically disadvantaged. But, you know, with the George Floyd um, tragedy, the Ahmaud Arbery tragedy, the Breonna Taylor tragedy, and so many tragedies, and even recent events of the, of the beginning of this year, it, it, it makes me, you know, think about what can I do as a lawyer to have a greater impact on the community um, to ensure that everyone is valued appropriately, right? I mean, and so I'm thinking, how can I embody the what Vernon Jordan did before he became right. the icon we know, what Thurgood Marshall did before he became the icon we know, what Constant Bacon Motley did before she became the icon we've come to know, how can I roll up my sleeves and do even more? And you have a role that has an emphasis on social impact at Netflix. What does, how does social impact and positive social impact play in what you do at Netflix? Well, it's, it's a part of who we are and what we aspire to do. I mean, what our statement is we exist to entertain the world, you know, and so, and by the world, we truly mean the world and all of its humanity and diversity. And so part of that for, for us and for me is making sure that we are reflecting and improving and adding value to the places and to the people's lives that we, we touch every day. And so uh, one of the really exciting things, you know, traditionally entertainment companies are exporting the best stories from um, the United States. At Netflix, we are developing the best stories wherever they may be found. And the reality is there are great stories all around the world. And as a part of doing that, we are trying to contribute to the places where, where those stories emanate from. And so you know, it is, it's baked into the DNA of the company. And so one of the things that we, we've worked hard at doing and I've worked hard at doing is just making sure that that part of our value system, that part of our culture is clearly communicated and it is actually not just something we talk about, but something we act upon in how we go about our everyday work. It's been interesting and illuminating for me to see all of the, the tragedies, killings that have happened in the United States from the per perch of being outside of the United States, because I'm now based in, in Amsterdam and in Europe. And uh, I think the thing that I've I've learned is no matter where you are, there is a push for up and down communities, if you will, um, insiders or outside and outsiders. And then there are forces that 
can play a pivotal role in, in bringing those communities together and recognizing our, and embracing our differences, but also embracing our connected humanity. And so in entertaining the world, you know, it's, it's one of the things that I, and part of my value system that I try to bring to the work that, that we do at Netflix as well. I think, you know, that's the mission. I know at Cooley, we are really focused on how we can be the best law firm in the world, but not just the best law firm in the world, the best corporate citizen in the world. And, and, and you have to dig deep, you have to unravel, and you have to connect the dots. So to see Netflix thinking about that and, and acting on that, I think that is tremendous. For example, we, we made the commitment to investing more of our resources, our capital in black banks. Um, and the way we approached it was not just to do it to invest $100 million, which we've now done in black banks by ourselves, but was to set up an investment vehicle so that other companies could do the same. And it's, it's had a dramatic qualitative impact, but also a, a dramatic quantitative impact and just the dollars going into those banks that then go into communities, you know? And so uh, for us, that is just a part of, of who we are and, and, and a recognition of the kind of impact we can have through entertainment. That's fantastic. Well, Dean, it was a pleasure catching up with you. Uh, I look forward to more conversation. I'm proud of everything you do in the, in the trail uh, blazing individual you are. Uh, and, I, and I hope to follow suit as always. Oh, uh, you're definitely doing it already. So thanks for the compliment straight back at you. And uh, it was great to catch up as well.